What's up guys, it's Eugene member and welcome back to my garden. So finally we fired up the grill, I've been promising for over one month. So today we're going to make a meal, but first I want to show you the progress of my garden. So let's get into it. So right here we have our peppers, as you can see they have started fruiting, we have some nice green sweet peppers growing over here. And as you can remember last month we did our first harvest and then we let them rest and they, they kept on going. As I had explained to you these are perennial plants, so especially in our subtropical climate they do really well. So after you harvest just give them time maybe one month and then they produce another batch. Then over here we have our Thai chilies. As you can see here, we have the flowers coming out. So, uh, and I'm sure these Thai chilies and the sweet peppers are going to cross pollinate because they are close together. So, we're going to get an amazing pepper, hot and sweet. Then these other ones here are the other sweet peppers. And then we have our coriander over here. So, as you can hear the background noise, don't mind. We have a, a welding shop nearby. So, this is our kanzira over here, starting to get old because of the hot weather. But again. The weather is going to change very soon. As you can see, the weather is changing. Maybe we are going to get rains soon. We have our carrots over here. They are closely packed together, but let me just take one. So you see over here, the carrot is starting to form. So we'll be harvesting some baby carrots and then we'll let the rest develop and become big. And then right on this container, we have our radishes, which I really don't like the taste of them. I tried some, but they were very kind of bitter. So we have some over here which have grown big. And I have another one which was very massive. Let's see if I can show you. We have another one here. So I'm just going to harvest them and give out to friends. I don't really like the taste of the radishes. Then right here we have our watermelon. So as you can see they've already blossomed. We have flowers, we have some fruits. Then I want to show you just on this other side come then you can see this fruit over here so this is my first time growing the watermelons as you can see there is a scar over here so I've been supplementing it with calcium I don't want it to get a blossom end roots so we have like three three fruits decent sizes and then we need to build a trellis for them to support the weight of the watermelons so we need to do that lesser then on these other sacks we have uh, these are the Kenyeji veggies. As you can see, they've grown old. So they are now dying, dying out. So I'm going to replace them with something else. So when the weather is very hot, the veggies have a shorter lifetime. So they just grow and go to seed immediately to kind of save the next generation. And right here we have our Kanzira. This one is growing nicely. And then the Managu. As you can see, the Managu, just like I've told you, they are beginning to produce some flowers. They are very young. That is because of the heat. Then on this uh, bed over here, we have our garlic starting to germinate. So we, we repurpose this uh, bed from old cutting boxes. And then on this other container over here, I have grown some basil. So the one which was here grew old, died out, so I took the seeds. Then I grew the seeds over there. And here we have our eggplants, which I've staked them to kind of support them. Then on this side, I'm building uh, the wall that I told you about. I want to build a green wall over here. So this is the Malabar spinach or the derema. So once it rains, it will cover this whole area. It will be full of leaves. Then over here, I have transplanted my tomatoes, which I'm shielding from the sun just to reduce the transplant shock. So they'll stay here for about three days because this is a shaded area. As you can see, they're going up to that end over there. So once they establish their roots, then you are going to put them under the sun. So now we are going to prepare our meal. Then I'll show you what we are going to be cooking right on our grill. So right here I have a couple of spices, which I want to make a dry rub for my chicken. So you can see here we have some chili powder, we have paprika, we have cumin, there is curry powder, and then we have coriander. 
coriander, black pepper, and some mixed spices. So we're going to make a dry wrap for our chicken. And then I'm going to show you how to dissect our chicken so that we can go to the grill. And this will cook them quickly. So let me just take this out. So it's a decent size. We're going to remove the backbone. You see this, this one is called isundu. This one's a grenade flavor. When we were kids, this is what we used to eat before the chicken was ready. So you can just trace where the backbone is. And then you cut. If you have scissors, kitchen scissors, it's going to be a little bit easier. Now let me trace with my finger. I have some ribs that we need to cut. So we'll do it on this other side again. You can also put the chicken on the fridge to farm up, which will be easier to now cut. Make sure you have a sharp knife. So I'm going to cut the skin. how it's going to be we put it on the grill like this so I'm going to dissect this other one I'm going to wash this kind of remove the blood then we will come back as we do our dry we need to mix all the spices together then I'm just going to coat the chicken with some oil can use anything so I'm just coating it with oil so that the rub can stick to it. Then you're going to put it skin side down. The isundu. I'll cut it also. This other one over here. So I'm just going to wash my hands. I'm going to prepare our veggies, which are going to roast on the sides. Let me just turn it. Now you can see the back on it, starting to get that char. So I soon do. So 
you can just tuck in the wings. You can cut them from here, just avoid them from burning. So now I'm going to chop my veggies. So you always clean your surface to avoid cross contamination. So I just turned the table, the, the chicken side was on that side. So now I'm going to use the veggies on this other side. For the red onions, I'm just going to make like big chunks, onion rings. So I'm going to hit them with salt, then a little bit of black pepper. If you can get crushed black pepper, it's better than this one. This one is very fine. Then I'm going to take our onion rings, just crush them at the grill. So I'm going to turn this. See now you're getting the skin nice and crispy and caramelized. So at this point I can just brush it with a little bit more oil. So now I've just made a paste of my spices, a little bit of oil and the choma sauce. So I'm going to use this to baste the chicken, just to give the crust more bites and more flavor into it. So I'll just keep basting. Not forgetting my sundu. And, uh, which I really need to invest on getting some tongs. That will make my work easy instead of using these forks. over there <laughs> just burnt my finger so now the crust is developing nicely as you can see this back this char so don't be afraid of this this is more flavor to your chicken then I'll cut it so you see the isundu just filled with fat. You can get a So that's why I'm saying this is a grenade. Grenade of flavor. Na ingisha kai me burst. So this is one of my favorite pieces of chicken growing up. Isundu and the thigh. So now my isundus are ready. Which I'm going to take off the fire. Nice and juicy. This right is the grenade that I told you about. Explodes in your mouth. Nice. So now our chicken is 
chicken is ready. As you can see, it's now full apart soft. See, this leg wants to come off. So now I'm not going to get them off. That's it with our roasted chicken. I'm going to plate it. So I'm going to uh, there we have our grilled chicken. So now let me just take this leg and you can just see how tender it is. So kindly like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next week.